Ahihu and his brother, sons of Aaron, offered strange fire before the Lord. And y'all have heard that before, haven't you? You see that in Le Leviticus chapter 10. And you know what? God slew them right there on the spot. And you know, the first thing that uh, Moses did when Aaron found, he said, don't say nothing, Aaron. Don't say nothing. This is what God told us to do. But they had lost the fear of God or something. You know, thankfully, Aaron held his peace. He never spoke against God. He recognized that they had trespassed against God. They got over into a sphere by their own by their own violation, they did it, volition, they did it. Thereby they sinned. And God killed them right there on the spot. Look at Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 through 3. And you have to quicken who were dead in trespasses and sins. And that word dead means separated. We all know that. Wherein in times past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also you all had your conversation in times past in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath even as others. Brother, that's our history right there. Every one of us, children of wrath. Right. Amen. Look what the Amplified, it really brings this out. And you, he made alive when you were separated or dead by your trespasses and sins in which at one time you walked habitually. You were following the course and fashions of this world. We're under the sway and the of the tendency of this present age, following the prince of the power of the air, you were obedient to and under the control of the demon spirit that still constantly works in the sons of disobedience, the careless, the rebellious, and the unbelievers who go against the purpose of God. Among these, we as well as you once lived and conducted ourselves in the passions of our flesh, our behavior governed by our corrupt and sensual nature, obeying the impulses of the flesh and the thoughts of the mind, our cravings dictated by our senses and our dark imaginations. We were then by nature children of God, of God's wrath and heirs of his indignation like the rest of mankind. But God, <laughs> I like that, don't you? But God. Right, yeah. hey, I like them but gods. Yeah. Hallelujah. Now the sixth, this number six, lawlessness, our spiritual anarchy. First Timothy chapter one. Knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man, but for the lawless and the disobedient, for the ungodly and for sinners, for unholy and profane, for murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers, for men slayers, for whoremongers, for them that defile themselves with mankind, for men stealers, for liars and for perjurers, persons, and if there be any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine. Brother, that's what lawlessness is. We know what that outlaws, we call them outlaws. Let's look at the Amplified. Knowing and understanding this, that the law is not enacted for the righteous and upright and just who are in right standing with God but for the lawless and unruly, for the ungodly and sinful, for the irreverent and profane, for those who strike and beat and even murder fathers and strike and beat their and even murder mothers for men slayers, for impure and immoral persons, those who abuse themselves with men, kidnappers, liars, perjurers, 
and whatever else is opposed to wholesome teaching and sound doctrine. Brother, we are identifying sins that we see manifested every day in our, in our surroundings in this world. Number seven, unbelief are an insult, are an insult to the veracity or the divine veracity or truthfulness. John chapter 16, verse 8 and 9. And when he had come, and when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and judgment of sin because they believe not on me. Brother, that's the last straw, unbelief. Unbelief. Now, on page six, we got sin originated with Satan. And you find that in Isaiah 14, verse 12 through 14. Sin originated as far as the geography of where it started. Started in heaven, didn't it? Isaiah 14, 12. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou... How art thou cut down to the ground which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the all stars of God. I will set upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Now, how did sin start with humanity? We know it started with the devil. Well, how did it get into the human race? Romans chapter 5, verse 12. Whereby, as by one man, sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. Romans 5, 19, For as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Now you know what the key word, what do you think the key word is in that, in that verse? The key word, I believe, in the verse number 19 is that word made, made. Because I want you to notice this. For by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. You did not become a sinner by some act. You were made sinner. Just like I know I'm getting ahead of myself, but I, this I got to get into this now. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21, because see, I heard my dad say one time, how come that I'm condemned for what Adam did? He, he asked me that question. How come that we're condemned because of Adam? Because Adam was a, 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 a federal headship. He represent every human. Adam. There was two federal headships. You're either in Adam or you are in Christ. He's the other federal headship. Now, in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 21, for he was made sin who knew no sin that I might be made the righteousness of God in Christ. Christ was, he did not sin. He was made sin. And I never was righteous. I can't be, but I was made righteous. You see what I'm saying? By the righteousness of Christ. I believe that's the key word there in that in the verse. Sin was an universal. 
Every man is born in sin, shaped in iniquity, come to the world speaking lies. With one exception. Amen. And of course we know that exception was Christ. Now you know what? It's, have you ever thought about why there's no redemption for angels? You know that uh, when Satan sinned, I think two-thirds of the angels fell with him. Is that right, Brother Bruce? Was it two-thirds or a third? Everybody comes to that conclusion because of Revelation 12 that the third part of the star. I don't yeah. I, but I there was a, a lot that fell with him. But you know, Christ didn't come to redeem the angels. He come to redeem Abraham's seed. That's why he become a, a son of Abraham. He come to redeem Abraham's children not angels. Now you can go to the book of Galatians and find that. Amen. I didn't want to get sidetracked on that, but you can go to Galatians, I believe chapter 3, and you'll find the answer to that. There's no redemption for angels. And here's something else about angels. They do not multiply. They do not... That's the word. Procreate. They do not pro procreate. Whatever, how many angels God made, that's what they are. Amen. They do not multiply. That's why I do not, I don't have all the answers, but I do not believe that doctrine where they said that these angels came down and left their first estate and they had sex with the women on the, the sons of God and, and that's what brought to Cain's sin, uh, sin or something. I, I don't buy that. I don't think angels can do that. <clears throat> and then uh, St. John chapter 3 verse 5, and we know that he was manifested to take away our sins and in him is no sin. Hallelujah. See, how come that we're free from sin? Huh? Because you are in Christ. See, you're no longer in Adam. You are in, that's what it says here. And we know that he was manifest to take away our sins. And in him is no sin. So it all depends on where you at. Are you in Adam? Are you in Christ? Now, brother, you say, well, Brother Tom, or whatever, uh, I sin. Turn to Romans. Uh, let me just deal with this right now. What does it mean to turn to Romans chapter 4? Romans chapter 4. Now, brother and sister, here's. Here, Here's what you got to take into account. When Christ died on the cross at Calvary, all of your sins were future. Every one of them. They were all future because you wasn't even born yet. You hadn't committed any sins. When did Christ deal with your sins? On the cross. Amen. Now look at it. In Romans chapter 4, verse number 6. Even as David also described the blessedness of the man unto whom God imputeth righteousness without works. Imputeth, that word impute means to charge. Saying, blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered Blessed is a man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. Brother, your sins have been imputed to Christ. Amen. That's, that's the way it is right there. Now, you got to remember, brother and sister. Amen. We stand by faith, don't we? I don't, it ain't my emotions. It ain't by any other vehicle that I have I access to this grace. It's through faith. Amen? 
Faith, what is faith? Faith is information that we get from God that we are to walk in or we are to believe, we are to accept. That's what information, it's information, the word of God. How, how, come, how did Noah know how to put in the ark to keep it from leaking? God told him. And he said, by faith he prepared an ark. By information. He didn't know nothing about building arks. He was a sheep herder. He wasn't no carpenter. But by faith Noah moved with fear, prepared an ark. Faith is information that you get from God. Today we call that revelation. Information. How do you get it? How does God give us information? By revelation of his word. Amen. Uh, all right. Now, let's drop down to the last comment on page six. Sin incurs the penalty of spiritual and physical death. Genesis chapter 2, verse 17. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day that you thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Mm. Genesis 3, 19. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread till thou return into the ground. For out of it was thou taken, for dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. Ezekiel chapter 18 verse 4 Behold all souls are mine as the soul of the Father so also the soul of the Son is mine the soul that sinneth shall die Ezekiel now you know uh, brother and sister this, I know this is so simple that you probably already know it but you know man is a Body, soul, and spirit. It's not talking about your body. Your body really does not sin. You know that, don't you? Your body is just a tabernacle that you live in. But in there you have a soul. And that's your reasoning, your imagination, your conscience, your will. And there's something else. I can't think of it now. But that's where your soul is and the soul that's sin because that's where sin comes at that's where it starts it's manifested through a body that's true but the body is just carrying out the will of the soul you understand Romans chapter 6 verse 23 for the wages of sin is death but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord Sin has no remedy but in the sacrificial death of Christ. And you know what, folks? The Old Testament points to this all the time. You remember in the Old Testament sacrificial system when that man brought that lamb to the priest, the high priest, now notice this, he didn't examine the man to see if he was worthy. He looked at his offering to see if it was spotless and it met the requirements. That's what he looked at. And now the, just it's, it's Christ, see, was our sin offering. He was spotless without sin. <laughs> Amen. And that's where our redemption is, is in that sacrifice, sacrifice lamb. The Lamb of God, as John the Baptist said, that takes away the sin of the world. I tell you what, hey, could you have ever in, in your wildest imagination come up with a plan of redemption like this? There ain't no way. I tell you, it's out of this world, ain't it? <laughs> Acts chapter 4, verse 10. Be it known unto you and all the people of Israel, that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him doth this man stand here before you hold. 
This is a stone which was set at naught by you builders, which is become the head of the corner. Neither is there salvation any other, for there is none other, none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Amen. Hebrews 9, 26. For then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world. But now, once at the end of the world, hath he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. Hallelujah. And as it appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. Let me ask you a question. Amen. Did Christ come to save everybody? Well, if he did, he hasn't done it. Is salvation, is salvation a offer? You know, we make offerings and we say, if you do this, I'll do this. That's an offer. But uh, over in the book of Action, I don't have that scripture, but you'll recognize it when I quote it or say some of these, these words right here. He commandeth all men everywhere to repent. Salvation is not an offer. It is a command. He commands all men everywhere to repent. God is not, let's make a deal. No, sir. He's not in that kind of... He knows the end from the beginning. That's how he can predestinate. He, and how he... He, everything that happens is decreed by God. Amen. And he made it on the basis of faith. Now, we know as far as Galatians chapter 2, verse 8 says, For by grace are you saved through faith. That not of yourselves, it is a gift of God. Even the faith to believe is a gift from God. Amen. We started our scriptures off, he that predestinated. Amen. Salvation is not a shot in the dark. God knows exactly every predestinated seed is present and accounted for. He said, my, I know my sheep. They hear my voice and my sheep follow me. He says over there in 1 John chapter 17, in a great high priestly prayer of Christ, he said, I pray not for the world, but those that you gave me out of the world. Exactly. Amen. He didn't come to save the world. He came to save his elect. I hate to be so blunt, but that's the truth. That's the scripture. Amen. Salvation is not a shot in the dark. It's not blind faith. Amen. It's not according to your will, according to your decision. Of course, you have to accept Christ. He don't do it without you coming in contact with him. And you, he has presented you with the gospel. But brother, he know that you was going to receive it. He know it before you did. Guarantee. <laughs> i tell you what. This is... A, all right, this made of, now this salvation, I got down here, made available by faith. Sure. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it's a gift of God. Acts chapter 13, verse 38, Be it known unto you, therefore, men and brethren, that through this man is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins, and by him all that believe are justified from all things from which we could not be justified by the law of Moses. To him that believe. Amen. To the doubter and those that don't believe, there ain't nothing there. Ain't nothing there for them. 
Amen. Am I going too long? Are y'all ready to quit? Huh? No. Well, let me just cover this here and then we'll leave. Now, on page, um, page eight, sin may be sub, uh, summarized as threefold. Number one, sin is an act. The violation of our want of obedience to the revealed word of God. Number two, sin is a state, absence of righteousness, right? That's your state. Number three, sin is a nature. And your nature is in the uh, enmity toward God. So there you have the, the threefold uh, definition here of what sin is. The remedy. Romans chapter 3, verse 20. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. There's no redemption in the law. It's the knowledge of sin. One writer, let me see, uh, that's in Galatians. Let me just turn over there real quick. Galatians chapter 3. Let's just turn over there and look at that. Galatians chapter 3. I believe it's uh, 19. No. Uh, oh, here it is, 24. Galatians chapter 3, verse 24. See, that road sign out there, it's just 35 miles an hour. That's the knowledge right there of the law. The law said thou shalt not speed. And he gives us the knowledge of that through these road signs. Thou shalt, 35 miles an hour. That's the law, right? Amen. Now, what's that for? Notice, in Galatians 3, 20, wherefore the law was our schoolmaster. <laughs> it was to teach us something. To bring us unto Christ that we might be justified by faith. It's to bring us to Christ. That being a speed sign out there is not going to get you to Christ. The law won't do it, but it'll point you to where mercy is and where grace is. See? Because that's what we need, right? Yeah. We need mercy and grace. Yeah. Amen. All right. But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifest, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Yes, sir, we're going to get into that. The witness by the law and the prophets. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all them that believe, for there's no difference. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Oh, I like that word freely, don't you? Amen. This is, like I said earlier, God ain't making deals. This is the deal. Amen. It's free, freely given. Amen. Both the law and the prophets strongly emphasize the need of man. It sure does. They insist on the hopelessness of his case, except when God, in his sovereignty of his grace, takes him up. The law, by its typical pictorial representative symbols, or symbolic system of sacrifices, clearly pointed out the way in which the need of sinful men were met. Oh yes, it was outside of himself a lamb had to take it, had to deal with his sin. Man was helpless. He couldn't help himself. Nothing he could do because why? He was dead in trespasses and sins. You know, I can just see Jesus standing there at the grave of Lazarus. Lazarus! And here's Lazarus, being dead for four days. 
You take the first step. I just want to see if you're really serious about this, Lazarus. If you really want to get out of that grave. I want you to take the first step. Well, he could no more do that than nothing. He was helpless. He was dead. But Jesus walked up there. He had the power of death and hell. Hallelujah. He had the keys to the kingdom, I tell you. All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Jesus stood there at the tomb of Lazarus. Lazarus, come forth. <laughs> Lazarus, come forth, not in the power of his own strength, but in the power of God's word. Hallelujah. I love it. Brother, here I was, and dead, and chains, and bound down with the... the shackles of sin and death smelling like the devil come come forth brother mm. that's grace this system declared that God's way of delivering men from the due of their sins is by substitute a substitutionary sacrifice that only by such a sacrifice could God righteously re release men from their guilt. Brother, we've been saved from the guilt and the penalty of sin. We've been saved from the power and dominion of sin. And we will be saved from the very presence of sin. Yeah. Hallelujah. For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Now I'm going to look at these little scriptures here, and then we're going to close. He made him who knew no sin to be sin on our behalf, so that we might become the righteousness of God in him. That's from the New American Standard. Now look at Romans chapter 3, verse 23. Being justified freely by his grace, through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. In the Amplified, all are justified and made upright and in right standing with God freely and gratuitously by His grace, His unmerited favor and mercy through the redemption which is provided in Christ Jesus. Romans chapter 5 verse 1. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Romans chapter 5, 9, much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. Romans chapter 5, verse 9, in the Amplified, Therefore, since we are now justified, acquitted, made righteous, and brought into a right relationship with God by Christ's blood, how much more certain is it that we shall be saved by him from the indignation and wrath of God? Amen. Now, brother and sister, what I'm going to start with next, next week is that next topic. I'm going to prove to you in the Word of God that this great teaching of justification did not originate in the New Testament. No, sir. It started with the 